What Lies Below by Octavius Angelicus. That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange aeons even death may die. H.P. Lovecraft, The Nameless City. 1. Voyage Unto the Unknown. There is no need for me to reestablish what is already known of the BMAMNH archaeological expedition I was part of in the summer of 2019. I am sure you have read the various newspapers or seen on the television all there is to know about what has been told. What I shall detail, however, are the events that transpired aboard and post sink age of Emma, of which we all agreed upon never speaking of, an arrangement we all came to without the need to utter any words of discussion. Of course, dear reader, you know that there were seven from the British Museum and seven from the American Museum of Natural History, and you may find information regarding the ship's crew and the physical dimensions of the ship and many more details if need be. But what you will not know of is that there was an extra passenger who snuck himself aboard the ship, a Saul none the wiser until he revealed himself only some days prior to the sinkage. This rather unwelcomed intruder was blacker than the night, save for his green eyes, which would stare into our own in curiosity, shadowed by the affectionately blinking he gave us all, and those white fangs that he would reveal in his meowing for attention. Or, when he hissed, not at any of us in particular, but the ocean he seemed to loathe. The black tomcat we all grew to love, and even strangest of all, Thomas would pet him and his otherwise severe allergy would never react to this particular cat. During the trip, several names had been suggested for him, but in the end, we settled upon an amalgamation of two of these names, Black Tom, from the name Blackie. I do not quite remember who came up with that one, though the meaning behind it seems clear enough, and Thomas, not named after the strangely no longer allergic Thomas, but suggested by Hayes as male cats or tomcats, a respectable man he was, but even he suffered the same curse of uncreativity standard of an American. Anyhow, this black Tom would wander the ship freely, coming out of the shadows to any one of us for attention whenever he yearned for it and was particularly fond of laying upon his back for his belly to be rubbed, only to, albeit playfully, scratch the arms of he who took the bait, his green eyes leering at the unsuspecting victim's hands as they approached. It was on the night of Emma's sinkage he came to my cabin, which I had been sharing with three others from the British Museum, but they were elsewhere, and jumped up on the desk I was lent over, viewing my work, the work of us all, ancient text with the newly discovered ancient language, the very reason that we were headed out to sea in the first place, in hope to find that island we'd all said we hadn't. In looking over my notes, Black Tom found one symbol of particular interest. This symbol appeared to most likely be the island's name, but the etymology was a strange one, deriving from the verbs to lie and to trap, the latter of which comes from the noun meaning fence or wall, thus being a to fence or wall in, the adverb below and the pronoun it. This symbol can be translated where it lies entrapped below. A strange name to be sure. I had not many ideas what this imprisoned figure could be. The references to this island far and few between, the writers giving few words on it, those words all negative. To something only he could hear, the tomcat hissed suddenly, sending vague threats in every which way. I asked what was the matter with him, and he responded with a sympathetic mewing, staring those eyes of his directly into my own. The dark green of the irises seemed a green alien to this world in those moments, and my mind flickered through all the lexicon I knew until my own internal voice was used by another. Lifeboat, it said. A perplexed pause on my part. Then something rammed the ship from below, causing a violent side-to-side -side rocking. Lifeboat, the other side said with my internal voice again. This time I acted on the warning, pocketing the penknife from the desk and taking Black Tom into my arms and headed for the stairs, being thrown to and fro with every step of the way. A sudden rushing of water emerged, coming from the top of the steps, just as I reached, then a just as sudden springing of myself upward. Smashing into the ceiling, I, somewhat hazed, would switch to holding Black Tom in one arm, the other clutching tightly to the railing. These springings and side-to-side -side rockings continued as I went up the stairs, as did the rushing of water down them. But I did, against all odds, make it atop to the deck. There, I saw it. That thing. Or a part of it. Lit up by the twitching lights of Emma, wrapping around her with its grabbers all along the, her sides, trying to pull her down, the water on the ocean rushing into her as she was held downward into water. Just enough of the ocean's water spilled onto the deck as it rocked, 
But perhaps to toy with its prey, its grip loosened and a great thud came from below, launching Emma along with myself and Black Tom and anyone else still aboard into the air before we came crashing back down. I was unscathed from this crashing down. However, in getting to my feet, I slipped upon the wet deck, and the back of my head collided with something hard. Everything became a blur then, and I can only remember the next interval of events in between intervals of this blurred consciousness. I remember a black fluff standing atop my chest, staring at me, its head momentarily leaning to one side before it darted off elsewhere. My eyes closed, and all I could feel was dizziness, being otherwise devoid of any feeling whatsoever. In the next interval, someone was carrying me atop his shoulder, and not so gently, though unintentionally, dropped me into what I can now conclude was a lifeboat. Though I could not see any face clearly, my rescuer must have been Hayes, whom I had befriended during the journey with him teaching me poker and I teaching him cribbage, as he was the only black face among us. Immediately, another two were attending to my head, holding it steady as we dropped into the ocean, and, if I'm to guess, attempting to stop the bleeding. I'm not sure, my consciousness faded away once again just as we hit the water, my head once again thudding against a hard surface. The black stuff was sat atop my chest again, flinching away from any water splashing onto the lifeboat. One of the Americans had managed to bring his rifle, using it to shoot at things in the water, rubbing them away with the buttock when they tried to climb aboard the others making do to fight with their fists, perhaps it is possible that they were able to find some small items to use as weaponry. It's hard to tell. In the midst of the chaos, something grabbed me, more of its kind grabbing some others, too, pulling us into the depths. The black fluff jumped after us, and those humanoid shapes let go of us to face the cat. In my blinks, I saw the cat disappear, and something else take its place. Some of the humanoid sea creatures continued charging. Others fled. Whatever happened next, I'm uncertain of the details, as I faded away from consciousness, assuming this would be my end, as gravity dragged me down to the depths of the abyss.